Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Today I have an exciting episode. We're gonna continue the TypeScript series I started three weeks ago. I haven't forgot about it, okay? I promise. Uh, I, I really wanted to make the series and continue the series. It's because when I learned TypeScript, I just learned it in such a messy way. I stumbled my head, I hit, I tripped over. I started with generics. Who's who learns TypeScript with generics as the first thing to learn? Like, that's not okay. So I'm trying to make the series, like, as simple as possible to, like, really understand, hey, like, why is this uh, useful, you know? So, uh, YouTubers talk too much. Let's just get into it. So the first episode, we learned a bit about types and how TypeScript can help us in our code base to catch errors. In this episode, I want to focus a bit more on literal types, collective types, and understanding type narrowing and widening and why that's important. So I think it's a... We'll try to keep it as simple as possible, okay? I promise. So here we go. So let's say we have a user, okay? And this user is called develop by it. Go. Okay, so what what's the type of this? TypeScript is automatically gonna look at this code and it's gonna say, okay, by what you wrote here, I can tell that this is a type of string. Now, string is a collective type, just like Boolean, that's a collective type as well. Why? Well, because Boolean can be false or true. A string, the reason why this is a collective type is because strings can have different values. It can look like that, it can look like this, and it can look like that, okay? Uh, whereas a literal type, you're gonna hear that literal type, it literally means that it's that literal value that you see right there. So if I do const, if I do const this time, we know that constants don't change. Scooby-Doo makes its way into a TypeScript video, who would have guessed? As you can see, so it's not a type, so it's not just a type of string now, it's like really down specifically to this only value. And that's why when you use constants, you always get a literal type here. Well, not always actually, I'll show you why. Uh, if you do primitives, then yes, so if I have a const h30 here, that's gonna be a literal type of 30, meaning that this cannot be any other type of value other than 30. Whereas if it's with let, right, let's do um, collective type, collective age, and I'll say 30. As you can see, this is number. So number can be, again, it's a wider range. So now I hope you understand the difference with let and const. Let is gonna accept a wider range of types and const is gonna accept the only, basically the only one that's left, which is the exact type, the literal type. What about objects? What if I have a user like that and that has a name and an age and an ID of one here? Um, what, what are these types? Is it literal types? It's not, like, TypeScript is gonna try to find like a balance between like what kind of types it puts on the on these key value pairs. And in this case, it's gonna use a wider type, which is gonna be, it's just gonna put string for this uh, and number and number again, okay? So I can do user.name equals to Jane, right? That works fine. But what if you wanted to behave the same way you wanted to behave on the primitives here like that. Well, that's where the as cons keyword comes in. And now this, as you can see when you hover it, look at that. Now it's all literal types. Okay, so now user dot like name equals Jane. Uh oh, spaghettio. You cannot do that. All this is hard. Okay, like don't get overwhelmed by it if you don't get it straight away. It took me a long time to get this. It's perfectly normal. Um, is there anything else I want to show you? Yeah, so, okay, so it's all like, this is like more theory stuff, right? But like, how does it actually like look in the real world? Let me show you one, like you do maybe like, what do we do? React or Java, vanilla JavaScript? Let's do re uh, vanilla JavaScript. So maybe you have like a document dot, uh, get queries, not get query selector. See, I haven't done vanilla in a while. Document dot query selector. There we go. So you get like an element, okay? You get a div. Okay, so now TypeScript needs to decide what the hell am I gonna do about this? So it's gonna look, it's gonna see, oh, well, this is a HTML element. However, 
there might be a possibility that it can be null as well. You know, you never know. Something might have broken. So now, TypeScript is going to have a wider range. It's going to say, hey, this element can be a HTML div element or null. So now what you can do, like since TypeScript is showing you this, it's going to make you handle all the cases for it. So if, if you wouldn't have TypeScript, you just probably do like, oh, element dot add event listener, or like, I'll change the text of this to blah, 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 whatever. Okay. But what if this element is, you know, not here, then this thing would error out, right? So you can narrow it down. So this is called type narrowing is where you have something that can be multiple different types of types, right? Maybe you're doing a request from a database. It can be a type of error. It can be a type of success. It can be a type of whatnot. So that's why I can do something like this. If there is no element, well, then I can handle this case any way I want. Okay. And then check this out. Now element here in this stage can only be a HTML div element because we narrowed it down. We excluded all the other possibilities. And that's essentially it. I'm going to talk more about this in the full stack next JS course that's coming out. Uh, you're going to see here that we use this quite a lot in our components where we check, Hey, if the data is, has an error, then we handle that in a specific way. If it doesn't, then we handle that in a different way. Now, how can you use type narrowing? Well, you can use the instance of keyword, for example. So I can do like a function called contains, and this is gonna take in, let's do a text of string, a search. I'll do string here, but it could also be a type of a re rege red re regex. So here right now, search is a type of string or regexp, right? So what I can do is say, if search, is an instance of, oh, there it is, also completed for me, uh, re regexp, right? Then here, search is gonna be the only type of regexp. Okay, so we handle the case here. And then here else, you can return whatever, like that, okay? Contains, let's do hello world, blah, blah, blah. Okay, there we go. Now, careful, you can also use type of, but you might shoot yourself in the foot. Let me just show you how you can accidentally do that. You know how I showed you the example with the element. So we have, let's say document dot query selector will get a div. Okay. Okay. So this is a type of HTML div element or null. Okay. So you could do something like this. Uh, just be careful. You can do if type of, and then you can check the element it's a type of object, for example. Okay. So then, and then you look at the element and it's still a HTML div element or a null. Like why? Cause I did this whole thing. Right. And I said, Hey, it should be a type of object. Well, in JavaScript, a type of null is an object, unfortunately. So you're not actually narrowing it out. I know. I'm sorry. It's so silly how we how JavaScript is, but it is what it is. Here's a fun, another funny one that you might run into. Let's say we have a function. Okay. And then this function, you have a parameter that you might accept. This can be, let's, let's widen that range again. We'll do, it could be a number. It could be a string. It could be, let's say a Boolean as well. It could be null. Okay. Here's what we'll do. We'll say if there's no X, okay, we'll filter it out. What do you think we'll have here? Console log X. Let's have a look. What's the type zone? Oh, whoa. So even though the value string and number are falsy here, TypeScript is actually right because the value, the, the range is so wide here of the types that can be like undefined and null. So it can still be a number or a string. So that's going to be it for this episode. I'm not going to go too deep into it yet because we do want to make this a like longer series. Uh, I'll cover like generics and stuff like that later on. Uh, but you guys also voted on X on Twitter. Follow me if you don't. Uh, I asked you guys, what should I learn next as a programming language to cover on YouTube here? And the winner is Go. So thanks for voting. And yeah, expect to go.